right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I made it. You know what that is? You better know what that is. That's Bodie Ghost Town. That's the largest surviving ghost town in America. Woo, they pulled out $34 million of gold over there. Oh man, I could, I could smell it. Yeah, I gotta have that gold. You know what I'm gonna say, huh? So come on, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that mill. That's what I'm talking about too. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Oh, now that's a head break. Look at that head break. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you what, I feel like a kid in a candy shop. See that huge old head frame? Of course, they moved it down here for the tourists. See this? Going down. Ding, 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 ding. These are safe. See that? And they can roll the ore carts on there, lock them in, ding, 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 ring the bell, up and down it goes. And see these cams here? Those would lock in in case there was a disconnect up on the, the ribbon cable. They used ribbon cable down here, not the stuff you're used to seeing. So, ooh, you see the mill in the background? Ooh, ooh that's the standard number one. All right, let's go out and take a look. Because I gotta have that go. <laughs> so come on, let's go. Ooh, come here, take a look at this. I want you to see this. All right. You know what that is? That's right. That's an outhouse. And why did they put it on the side of the house instead of away from the house, which is what I would have done, is because the winters here are so brutal, you don't dare go outside to go to the bathroom. You'll freeze to death out there. Now come here, take a look at this. They got all kinds of stuff in here. Look at that, they got a bed in there. And they got old Coke bottles in here. Look at that. And they got, oh look, there's a stove. There's an old stove in there. Oh, you don't see those anymore. Yeah, there's a there's a bed over there. There's a bed, there's an old brass frame right there. Ooh, you imagine staying the night in here? <laughs> Giving me the shivers. All right, now come here, look at this. Now, why am I showing you this section of town? Well. A long time ago, they had two fires here at Bodie. They had one in the late 1800s, and then again in, in the 1930s, early 1930s. And the last fire, of course, did the most damage. And this whole section down here, that looks like an empty field, that was full of houses and businesses and hotels and saloons and cat houses. This whole thing was full down here. And Main Street's right down there. Well, of course, the fire that came through here in the early 30s wiped most of that out. So now you're just seeing a small fraction of what they used to have back then. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through and explain what's left and why it's built the way it is. And then if we're lucky, we'll go up to the standard mill because that's where they pulled out of the gold. And I'm gonna teach you some geology too while we're here because I know that's what you wanna hear. So you know what I'm gonna say? Mm, you better know. So come on, let's go. Uh, this looks like the garage. Oh, you can see an old tire, old California rim. And there's some oil in there. <laughs> you have to excuse me while I'm doing my business. Uh, yeah, let me think. How to rebuild the country, yes. Mm. All right, so you're gonna see these everywhere, right? Of course, this one looks like it was put there because there's no hole down there. So anyway, you imagine what this looked like when the town was intact?
There was over 10,000 people living here. By the end of 1879, over 10,000 people live in Bodie. They come from all over California, from Nevada, and from other places in the West. There is traffic in the streets all day and night. There are trains of huge white-topped prairie schooners bringing freight from the railroad. There are hay wagons, lumber wagons, and prospecting outfits. The people of Bodie are extremely social. The favorite holiday is the 4th of July. Everyone has a good time. Most of Bodhi's men are single, but there are more wives and children than one would expect to find in such a place. One thing Bodhi doesn't have is wood. Wood is everything. Look at that. Is that a view or what? That whole area is just filled with buildings. There's the old firehouse. Ironically, it never burned. Ooh, and there's a standard number one. I want to get over there and look at the mines. Ooh, and they got, oh, they got ore carts in that one. I got to show you that too. And the schoolhouse. Oh, you got to see that. We're going to head over there now. So come on, let's go. All right, now, this is Main Street right here. There's a portion of it down there, what's left of it. And of course, all this uh, was burned out during the last fire in the early 30s. And they said it was created by a little boy playing with matches. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, woo, he's going to be in trouble. So this is Main Street. Of course, this is where all the craziness took place. And Bodie had a saying. Every morning they'd wake up and say what? Do we have a man for breakfast? <laughs> Which means, who got shot last night? Because they used to shoot a man every day here. Can you imagine that? There is no law out here. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit of backstory on this town while we're down here. All right, so William Bodie, and of course his name was spelled B-O-D-E-Y, and they changed it to B-O-D-I-E. William Bodie, William S. Bodie, and a man named Black Taylor, actually it was four gentlemen. And what they did is, <laughs> they came down here, and they were staying the night, and up by the cemetery, they were doing some sampling, and yeah, that's right, they found some gold. So what did they do? <laughs> they said, we want to mine it. Well, the problem was, hey, winter was coming, and it gets real cold up here, real cold. So two of the men, they left, and they went to another town over there by Bridgeport. And of course, William and his friend decided to stay. Why? Because it's gold, that's why. And so what they did is they thought, well, we could just last the winter here. Well, fate had it, they couldn't last the winter. You know how cold it gets up here? The winter of 1878 takes hundreds of lives from exposure and disease. So what happened was is they tried to go back town over by Bridgeport to get supplies. And they get into a blizzard on the way back. Of course, William Bodie never made it. Why? He broke his leg and froze to death. <laughs> And the rest is history. His friend came back and of course, they found placer gold up by the cemetery. Now you gotta remember the placer gold out here, it's not the kind of gold you're thinking of. It's not that super buttery rich gold that you're thinking of like in California. Oh no, no, no. See this area here? This is all what? This whole area is sitting on top of volcanic vents. And I got nothing, nothing, but a whole bunch of andesite in here, porphyry andesite. And what happened was, is that the gold has got a lot of silver in it, at least 30%. So what do they call that? You should know by now, son, it's called electrum. And some of that gold, <laughs> it don't look like gold. It looks kind of like white gold. It's heavy, but it's kind of a whitish color. And so the gold wasn't that rich. It wasn't as rich as they were hoping, but it was rich enough for them to get up on those hills and start digging like gophers, huh? 
Anyway, as we go along, I'll teach you some more of the geology of this place. Because I know that's what you want to hear. Ooh, I gotta be quiet because I don't want to wake up the dead. So, <laughs> so you know what I want to say, huh? So come on, let's go. <laughs> Ooh. That's right, that's a big ball, fool. And you can see they got a safe in there. Ooh, all safe and lock company. Imagine how much gold bars used to sit in there and all the stocks. Ooh, man, I'll tell you what. And also, you know what? Before I get too far along, I wanted to recognize all the clampers. If you don't know what that is, you're going to have to look it up. They helped keep this place preserved because a lot of people could have tore it down, but they didn't. So anyway, I wanted to give you some more history about the mill. Come here, look at this. So that's the standard on the hill. Now, there was a mill there before that one. And of course, it burned down like everything else in the Old West. It's prone to fires. Now, Bodie originally wasn't that big of a deal. Matter of fact, it was considered a bust by most miners back then. When they were tunneling up on the hill there, there was a cave in. That's right. And when it caved in, it opened up this beautiful ledge of gold. <laughs> gold! Anyway, it was so rich and so fabulous, it drew in investors and people all over the United States and around the world. They came here when they saw that. Oh man, and they started tunneling hard. But you remember, <laughs> these are what? These are epithermal deposits, that's right. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So you know they're gonna pinch out because they're shallow veins. Matter of fact, that one went down 1,280 feet and there was nothing down there. Tell you what, a healthy man goes down and a broken man comes up. So anyway, we're gonna wander up there to the mill because this is something that you hardly ever see and I want you to get a good taste of it. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? So come on. That's right, let's go. Look at this. This is the old sidewalk. You can see the old sidewalk out here. See that? That's right. You can see it going all the way along through here. Here's the old sidewalk. Right there. <laughs> Look at these old schools. You don't see this anymore. Ooh, I tell you what, I ain't happy at all. Come here. See that? The only way in is through a guided tour. And they only have one tour a day. Is that crazy? At one o'clock. Missed it by a half hour. And I even told them, hey, you know what? I got a bunch of people out there who are interested and wanting to see what's in there. And they said, sorry, we ain't got any money. <laughs> That's the California's problem, ain't it? All right, well, I guess you can't see what's inside, but We'll take you around the town anyway, so come on, let's go. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's been in this creek. I can see where they were doing some hand stacking. And hey, look at this, come here. See this? Now, the geology here is, like I said, they had porphyry andesite here, which is intermediate volcanic rock. And they also had rhyolite here. And rhyolite's also a volcanic rock. It's a felsic extrusive rock, if you know anything about geology. And the veins here are fissure-filled veins. And of course, the, the gold is inside those coarse fissure-filled veins. I know, that's a mouthful, huh? So, <laughs> so what they did is, when they found the gold down over there by the cemetery, they worked it up here under the hill, see that? And what they do, they find those small little stringers. Now they did find other things in there. They had sulfides mixed in, but not a lot. That's the neat thing about it. It was mostly free mill gold, and it's inside of these quartz veins. And like I said, you got a whole bunch of porphyry andesite here, which is your volcanic extrusive rock, and you have a whole bunch of rhyolite here. And then they got up on the hill there, you can see where they were going through the country rock to get down to those quartz veins and follow them. But the problem with epithermal deposits is what? They're shallow, shallow in nature. <laughs> so the veins pinched out at 1,280 feet. They should have known that going in. So anyway, we're in a section that's on this side of the Sierras and, and a lot of this area has been stretched apart and you have a lot of volcanoes in the area. That's why we have this andesite flow here. And of course, when you have that, you're gonna have a lot of hot acidic waters, brine solutions, hydrothermal alterations, hydrothermal fluids coming up. And it's gonna bring a lot of that gold and silver with it. And as it comes through in that solution, it's gonna solidify inside of what? Those fractures, faults and fissures. So they call it a fissure filled vein. 
and then once it does, the gold and the silver drop out. Now usually when you're working with that type of material, epithermals, the gold and the silver, the silver has a high concentration rate with the gold. And it'll actually come out of solution with the gold. And that's why the gold will have more of a white color to it. And of course it won't be as valuable because it has a high percentage of silver in it. Almost 30 to 40 percent out here. So anyway, I'm gonna pull some samples and look at see if I can find you something interesting. Ooh, I got a whole bunch of people watching me because they want to know where the gold is. So come on, let's go. All right, now a lot of you people out there ask me, Jeff, you always talk about these rocks and minerals and stuff, but you don't show us what they look like. Okay, well, I'm gonna show you what they look like. All right, see that? That ugly looking volcanic extrusive rock. Yeah, well, that's called what? Andesite, comes in different colors. This one just happens to be gray. And if it's got large crystalline structures in it, it would be called what? Porphyry andesite or andesite porphyry. And there's tons of it here. I mean, literally tons of it. This one, what is that? Ooh. Some people get this one mixed up. This is rhyolite. Sometimes people get that mixed up with what? Ash flow tough or brecciated tough. But that's rhyolite. You got dikes and dikes of this stuff around here. And then you have what? You have quartz this is quartz of course you all know what that looks like and you have a whole bunch of fissures and fractures that was in the andesite because when andesite's hot when it's in the comes to the surface and when it cools it what it shrinks and it creates cracks and fissures and then later on you get a whole bunch of hydrothermal fluids coming up and filling those voids and then solidifying out and of course the minerals drop out of solution and especially if they're boiling or the pH balance changes or temperature and pressure changes so anyway that's the way the gold is forming here and it's an electrum it's 30 percent silver if not more that's why when William Bodie first found it, he's like hey this, this gold looks kind of white well that's because it's got silver in it and over here by the north end of the park you can see where they found it it was just north of the cemetery in Pearson Spring so anyway, we're going to head down there and I'm going to see if I can find some of that shiny too because I know it's here. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? So come on, let's go. Another thing I got to point out is what? Yeah, Bodhi had its own railroad, believe it or not. How do you think they got all this stuff in here? <laughs> it's called a Bodhi Benton line. Now, I never did make it to Benton, but they did use it. It was a 32-mile line. It's at the very top of this hill. Of course, they won't let you up there. What they use it for? Well, they had to haul in machinery, mostly lumber, and of course cords of wood because everything up here was steam powered until they got the electric plant going. But they had, they had their own railroad, and you don't hear a lot about that either. But it is a beautiful town, huh? Oh man, I tell you what, you mentioned staying up here at night? <laughs> yeah, I bet you there's all kinds of ghosts living up here. Ooh, like in that one right there, huh? <laughs> uh, that's how ghost towns work. Well, a lot of people stayed on hoping that there would be a revival, but there never was. Uh, there was a few mining companies that came in and core sampled, but they didn't really find anything of value. Then in the early 1930s, another fire came through from the last people who were living here, and it burned the rest of, this is Main Street, burned this whole section right here. Oh, wow. Most of it all out there. Pretty much drove the nail in. Now there was some people who stayed Watch out for that. I was going to say, I've been taking a lot of pictures. Yeah. And there's been people who stay here. And I'm trying to pack the ghost out there. Oh, I've been doing nothing. Nothing. I've got this chill suit looking in there. Just like it. All right, now another neat feature about Bodhi. Take a look at this. <laughs> look at this truck. I know, right? See that? They had their own gas pumps too. I don't know if you can see that. Isn't that cool? Most mining towns didn't even have that. Look at this. <laughs> look at this store back here. I want you to take a look. Fully stocked. Miner's lanterns. That's right. Coffee grinders. See that? Ooh. You don't see this stuff anymore. 
Oh, that was for women's clothing right there. You see that? There you go. Fully stocked store. And this is the intersection right here. Main Street. See this? Wow. Look at that. Ooh, there's an ore cart right there. <laughs> Look at that. That's an ore cart. Look at that guy. See that guy right there? Yeah. There's a wagon right there. Oh, there's a skip car. See the skip car right there? That's a skip car. See that? Big old honk of wheels. Honk, honk, honk. Look at that. Look at this wagon right here. That's a heck of a wagon, huh? Man, that's something else. All right, let's go take a look in the store. I'm curious, see what they got in there. Okay, wow, look at this. Mm, yes. Mm, I think I'll go in here to the uh, Miners Union Hall. I've got a complaint. Mm. Actually, it's a museum. Look at this. See that? Wow. That is cool. Insulators. Steel pots. Ooh, roller skates. Family elbow. Oh, that is so cool. Scales. See the scales back there? Oh, you don't want to see what that is. Oh, there's a miner's land right there. The old carbide lantern. See that? Ooh, look at that. The old photography painting up there. You know that they had all kinds of stuff going on in here. Ooh, you don't want to see that. I know. Wow, all kinds of neat stuff. Ooh, look at that. That's what you want to look at. Rock samples. There's the wall rock. And tough. There's cupels. Oh, there's some safety views. You see that? And crucibles. Ooh. There's some of the material out here. Look at that. Of course, there's a town back in the day. Yeah. Wow, look at this. Okay, I want to show you this house right here. All right, now, the last people to live here in Bodie were staying here, in this house. Okay, and I'll leave a link down below so you can see who they are. Ooh, you imagine living here? <laughs> Ooh, look at all these beautiful houses over here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Bells lived in that house. So I called on Mrs. Bell. A little lady in a faded blue dress didn't want to smile because she had a missing tooth. Mrs. Bell, I said, I understand you're the only lady in Bodie. That's right, she said. I'm the Bell of Bodie. Well then, Mrs. Bell, I asked, I wonder if you can tell me something about the town. She wouldn't do it, though. She said she was a newcomer, only been there 20 years. She told me she would call her husband. He had been born there. Well, Mr. Bell knew all about Bodie, all right. I asked him about the locked houses. Seems the whole town is owned by a man named Kane. J.S. Kane, that is, not the old man. Old Vic Kane owned most of Bodie in his day. His son owns it now, what's left of it. But old Vic owned it when there were 12,000 people, when there were 17 mines, when they were hauling gold out of the mountains every day. Old Vic came from Canada way with nothing in his pockets but his hands. But before long, he'd gotten hold of the bank. That's the bank. In a card game, they say, but they always say something like that about any successful man. You know that. But before he was through, he had bought up the standard mine and practically anything else in town worth buying. They say he was controlled by some San Francisco millionaires. But as far as the people in Bodie were concerned, old Vic was the man. They made him the mayor. And that's his house. The only mayor the town ever had. Look at that. <laughs> 
See that? How you got a modern stove pipe on there? Isn't that sharp? Wow, this is really nice. You can go back in time. Oh, look at this. Come here. Come on. Stop lagging. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know what this is? This is the heart right here. This is where they would saw the wood. See that? You got to have a sawmill. <laughs> you got to cut that wood. Because they had a fire here, remember? So they had to rebuild the town. So this thing was going nonstop. Look at that. There's a forge over there. Ooh, there's another house over here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Come get some, boy. Look at that. Ooh, this one. This is a permanent residence, too. See that? Now you can see that. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh, I don't want to open that. That one's open. Oh, there's somebody living in there. There's a kitty door. <laughs> they got cats everywhere that live out here. That's got a nice roof on it, too. Wow. Oh, let's see what that is. Ain't got time to walk. Another outhouse. Ooh. Look at all those cool buildings, huh? Oh, there's another one. Oh, and there's the church. You see the church? Now that is a church. Man, that's something else. Beautiful looking organ in there, too. Okay, let's take a look at this. And a sight everywhere out here. I hate that. Let's take a look. Ooh, what's in there? Do I see a ghost? I don't see a ghost. Look at that. Look at that. Just the way they left it. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. There's another house. There's another house. Ooh, these buildings are falling. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Because <laughs> I got outhouses everywhere. Mmm, yes. Johnson, give me my coffee. As I come up with a new budget. Look at these houses. Beautiful. <laughs> Ooh, this one's open. This one's open. Ooh, there's a back door on this one. See that? Man, they did a good job. They did a really good job. <laughs> I know it. Ooh, that's a barn falling down. There's another one over here. Let's take a look at him. Beautiful wallpaper. You see that? Uh, all right, where are we? <laughs> you are boaty, silly. All right, now, right out behind me here, and in this area over here, you see that? You got piers and spring at the very top, and then you've got this draw right here. This is the area where William Bodie was first camping out. And there's a spring over here, and this is where he was at when he started sampling the area and he found gold. And of course you can see that they followed it down and up there across onto the hill. And that's why they started mining there. But Pearson Spring is right up over there. That's where they were camped out originally, but they had stopped here along this draw. And they were camping out and they found that gold, that electrum. So anyway, we're gonna head up to the cemetery real quick because I got another story. Because I know you want to hear that. So let's run on up there, shall we? So come on, let's go. Here it is, right here. The reason why this one's important, this is Evelyn. And she was just a child when she died. The reason why she's pointing to the top of her head is because that's where she was struck by a miner's pick. When two miners had a disagreement and they were fighting and she just happened to be 
in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so they buried her here. She was only three years old. I thought you, you might want to see this. Now, another thing I got to tell you is not far from here is another cemetery, but it's unmarked. And why? That's right. It's for the women of ill repute. They didn't want to bury him in this cemetery, so they buried him outside the cemetery because they figured that they weren't good enough for this cemetery. I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing all this, and I hope you've enjoyed today's little episode out here at Bodie. And if you enjoyed today's episode, well, you know what to do. I don't need to tell you. So anyway, until next time, this is Jeff Williams and Slim. I know he's around here somewhere. With that, ShipWilliams.com. Say, do you like old ghost towns? Well, we do too. Hang out with us and you'll see more than a few. Take care, everybody.